Have you ever wondered how they level a distribution box, especially in rocky soil? And maybe maybe they didn't do a really good job with their excavation. You know, what are some ways that the contractors will go about fixing a mistake? Or what if we go with the route of your system has a drain field that's taking a little bit too much water that it's not supposed to, and that drain field's starting to get a little bit oversaturated and you need to spread out some of that water to the other drain fields. How do you tackle that? Let's get into it and I'll show you in two seconds. So the very first thing we're gonna see is we have our box. So this is a six hole box. So we got one, two, three, four, and there's gonna be black plugs on this side. In our state, newer systems will have a four inch clean out just like that, but brand new systems will have a manhole riser on the system. The reason why you want a manhole riser is so you can adjust those yellow speed levelers. So if you have a system that is functioning properly, the water will come from this pipe. This is gonna be the outlet line of the tank inlet line to the distribution box the water will go in it'll hit that little brick and then the water should evenly disperse to all three of these trenches now let's say that you didn't have those speed levelers in place and all of the water was coming from that pipe hitting that brick a majority of the water would go into this trench right here and it wouldn't go into these trenches so how you counteract that is you adjust the level of that one to where it takes less and so that way a majority of the flow can work its way to the rest of the box and then it will be able to evenly disperse. How these are measured is you start running water from the back line and then basically as the water's running, you just spin these things back and forth. Now, they're real simple devices. Basically they fit into the four inch pipe and you just slide them in place and then you just rotate them. As we can see, we've got three and that's so that way we can evenly disperse into all three of our trenches. Now, let's say that the trench over here is getting too much water and it's oversaturated and we're starting to have some problems. Now, what you can do is you can rotate the hole for this one up to the 12 o'clock or three o'clock position and lower the holes for these ones. So that way they start to pick up more of the slack because the goal of a distribution box is to have even distribution into all of your trenches so we can get the same lifespan between all three. Now, the problem if you don't do anything about it, if you start oversaturating that specific one right there, What'll happen is you get too much water into the, pit, into the trench and you run the risk of it backing up or surfacing to the ground. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is that a problem if it's surfacing? Well, in our state, anytime you have sewage that surface to the, it surfaces, uh, you run the risk of a neighbor or somebody else saying, hey, that guy is discharging sewage in an improper way. And then you can end up basically having to pay fines and being forced by the county or whatever local representation you have to actually do something. And nobody wants that. So the big concern with the system not functioning correctly is that mostly it's just a health hazard, right? You don't want sewage water coming up to the surface and having kids potentially run through it or cause any kind of problems. It's never a good time. So it's really important to make sure that you have a good functional system with even distribution. Now, distribution boxes are very common in our area. They may not be common in your area because I don't know where you live, right? So there are other ways that people would usually go about dealing with dispersion of the effluent into the different absorption trenches. One of the other ways that we would usually see this, specifically more in Montgomery County, is what's called serial distribution, where basically you'll have one pipe to a trench, it'll hook left or right 10 feet, and then it'll double back on itself for the next 50 or 60 feet, and then it'll hook the opposite direction 10 feet, and then it'll double back again. And it just kind of makes a zigzag pattern. So the problem with that style, let's just say that you park a dump truck on your system. Dumb idea, but let's just say you do it for sake of argument. When this happens, what you're gonna do is you could potentially crush one of the pipes or cause an issue in the first leg. Now, if you cause an obstruction or an issue in the first leg, the water's not gonna be able to get to the second leg or third leg, meaning those other systems are not useful. And you basically are wasting your, your money by putting them in. With the distribution box, if you crush leg A, you can still use leg B and C in the interim. Same thing goes when your distribution box is not dispersing the liquid evenly. You might flood out leg A, but because you have the box, you're able to adjust it to where you can use legs B and C and give leg A time to recover. Now, generally in our area, the guidance is if you allow the system to rest, meaning it's not receiving any water, it should be able to recover some of its lifespan. Now, we've not been doing that long enough, in my opinion, to see any noticeable results besides anecdotal evidence, and I haven't seen any research papers on it. But 
the anecdotal ev evidence is you could have an old system from the 60s, 70s, or 80s that failed. You install a new system in the early 2000s, and then now, 20 years later, that old system's able to actually start accepting water again because you gave it time to dry out and for all that biomat to basically disintegrate. Biomat is a real sticky substance. It's called biologic material. Basically, it's poo, right? It's poo, toilet paper, all that good stuff. All the little floating bits that work their way out of the tank that work their way into the drain fields. Now, the problem with this biomat is that it basically tar lines the inside of the soil and with the amount of water that you're pumping through, you know, showers, toilet, hand washing, all that good stuff, all that water plus the biomat creates a, basically an environment to where the soil cannot get rid of that water and it starts to stagnate and it starts to pond. Once it starts to pond, that basically means that that trench or dry well or whatever it is that you have has failed, all right? There are some solutions that people will sell you to fix it, but there's not been any evidence uh, or uh, recognized repair in our state for those quick solutions. Commonly, you'll see people use like caustic soda solutions. Mm, maybe there's some evidence to it, but again, our state doesn't recognize that as a permanent repair. You still have to permit it and you have to declare to the county, we had a failure, we are trying this, and then we'll see. The county will usually let you do uh, experimental stuff, but most people don't permit them and <laughs> most people don't document it. And so then it can create some problems where if you do this experimental stuff, maybe it buys you six months, you sell that house in that six month period to somebody who has no idea that's happening and then it fails when they move in. So the state gets real fussy about stuff like that. So you just, just be careful, right? So when it comes to distribution boxes to kind of bring everything back together, whenever you're installing them, most contractors will do a really good job of getting it level, having everything flow correctly, not really doing anything super crazy. But I would say that a majority of properties nowadays, whenever you get a new distribution box installed, somebody's gonna install those speed levelers as a future use. It also makes it to where you can really dial in how level that box is. It makes it simpler, right? If you don't have speed levelers in your distribution box, it may not hurt to consider putting some kind of access at the surface and putting one of those in because they do work, they do help. Baltimore County, for example, requires manhole access on every new distribution box and those speed levelers to be installed. The reason for Baltimore County doing this really mainly is a diagnostic thing, right? It makes it easier for the person to diagnose what's going on and it makes it where you as a homeowner are able to get whatever's wrong fixed much more fast and more efficiently. So it's a good idea, right? Speed levelers are fairly cheap and inexpensive, so if you dig up the box yourself, you can install one. Most speed levelers are a dollar or two per, per plug, right? You only need like two to four. Most houses don't really have more than five drain fields. Um, if you're ever stuck on where to get them, you can get them from Home Depot, Lowe's. You can also get them from any kind of plumbing supply house store. They may not know what they're called. They may be called something different. We call them speed levelers, but your area might be a little bit different. They're very important to make sure you have a, dis a distribution box evenly dispersing liquid into the trenches or seepage pits, depending on whatever you have, right? If you found this useful in any way, if you gain any value out of this, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I have more videos posted every day on the world of well and septic, and I look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow.